Right now, a naval recruiter in Janesville is arrested on child sexual assault charges. What we know so far. And it's win or go home for the U.S. men's soccer team as they prepare to take on Iran in the World Cup. This is News 3 Now at noon. And we begin with breaking news out of Baraboo, where Jack Young Middle School and Baraboo High School were evacuated this morning after a bomb threat. School district officials said someone called in a bomb threat against the school this morning. Students and staff were evacuated. The situation is active, and officials say more updates will be given as things progress. The public is asked to avoid the school area at this time. To Janesville now, where a naval recruiter is under arrest. Police say he abused his position to gain access to teens at a local high school and sexually assaulted them. According to police, 25-year-old Brian Bradley Hubbard of Illinois began recruiting at the school in the fall of 2021. He allegedly used his position to get personal information from students and had conversations with them through Snapchat and other social media apps. Police say Bradley Hubbard had unwanted sexual contact with at least two juveniles and attempted sexual contact with another. He faces four counts of child enticement and three counts of sexual assault of a child. Police said he recruited students at other schools around Rock County. An investigation is ongoing and anyone with further information or who believes they were victimized is urged to contact the Janesville Police Department. The U.S. Naval Criminal Investigative Service is also conducting an independent investigation into the incidents. Police in Columbus are asking for help finding the driver who hit a crossing guard last week at a crosswalk and didn't stop. It happened on Wednesday in the area of West James Street and Dickinson Boulevard. Police say the driver, who is only being identified as a woman, was behind the wheel of this white Jeep SUV. The crossing guard, who was wearing a vest and carrying a stop sign, suffered minor injuries. Let's head to the Weather Center now. Julian Seawright has a look at your certified most accurate forecast. What a dreary day. Well, it's definitely not a day for any kind of views outside, Mark, as the cloud cover and the fog mixing together are just making for exactly like you said, a dreary day for us. Taking a look at our visibility, you can see where it's really gotten even lower in terms of visibility. Areas to the west and to the northwest from Viroqua all the way down to Platteville and Black River Falls are where we're looking at some of the worst type of visibility for for us. Madison, Monroe, and Janesville have seen improvements, but we can probably count on some of that visibility to be lowered as the system continues to move its way through as we get into the rest of our afternoon. As of right now, any kind of activity is far to the northwest, but we are still dealing with a bit of some mist and even some fog and cloudy conditions. Now, for the rest of our afternoon, Temperatures are going to warm up to around 50 degrees around 4 o'clock, but then we're going to start to see some showers on and off throughout the rest of our afternoon heading into our evening before we start to see that transition from rain to a couple of flurries and maybe even some snow showers. Tonight, temperatures will plummet into the lower 20s throughout southern Wisconsin. Mark, it is going to be a cold one, and we're going to have to watch for potential ice developments. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. Check back in a few minutes, Julian. Yeah. Thank you. UW health officials say flu cases have more than quadrupled in the first three weeks of November. The health care provider saw 422 positive cases last week, more than any peak the hospital had seen last season. Last season's highest week was 125 cases in mid-December. Officials said UW Health has not seen a dramatic increase in hospitalizations due to the virus, but there have been twice as many cases this year compared to this time last year. The last two flu seasons have been relatively mild, thanks in a large part due to precautions taken to stop COVID. Today, the U.S. Senate is set to vote on a Respect for Marriage Act, a bill that guarantees same-sex and interracial marriage in federal law. The vote comes after the Supreme Court decision on abortion rights over the summer. It was led by Wisconsin Senator Tammy Baldwin. We sat down with the senator just a few minutes ago. She said she had hoped a coalition of Republicans would join Democrats on the bill. Even without many Republicans, the bill is still expected to pass the Democratic-controlled Senate. Retired NFL quarterback Brett Favre is asking a Mississippi court to dismiss a complaint against him. The Mississippi Department of Human Services wants him to pay $228,000. It's due to a $1.1 million the Mississippi Community Education Center paid him previously. That money came from federal welfare funds and was meant to pay Favre for promotional ads and speaking engagements. The state auditor said those never happened. Favre returned the money, but the auditors say he still owes $228,000 in interest payments. 
Now to new details on a horrific crime in California in which a former police officer allegedly catfished a teenager and then murdered three members of her family, thousands of miles away from his home. The alleged killer, 28-year-old Austin Lee Edwards, was shot dead in a confrontation with sheriff's deputies. Edwards resigned as a Virginia state trooper late last month, according to police. He drove cross-country to meet a 15-year-old girl who lived at home with her mother and grandparents. He developed a relationship with her. There might have been an exchange of texts, maybe phone calls. A neighbor reportedly called 911 after she saw the suspect wearing a trench coat and a mask arguing with a crying barefoot girl believed to be the 15-year-old before she got into Edward's car. A fire then started soon after and the bodies of three people were found in the entryway. It's believed Edwards was grooming the teen by pretending to be someone else online. The mother of a Uvalde massacre victim is suing the gun manufacturer and the store that provided the weapons used in the attack. The federal lawsuit alleges the mass shooting was, quote, enabled by the illegal, reckless, and negligent actions of gun manufacturer Daniel Defense. The lawsuit also names Oasis Outback, the store where it says the shopper, the, the shooter that is, picked up or bought guns and ammunition, including two AR-style rifles. Look at this fireworks store in Melbourne, Florida caught fire after a car crashed into the building yesterday. Police say the driver of the SUV crashed through the front windows of the store. There we go. They say the crash triggered a major fire and the flames then set off the fireworks. The driver died at the scene. No one else was hurt. Two workers were inside the store and managed to safely escape. The police are still trying to determine what caused the crash. It's showdown day at the World Cup for Team USA. U.S. and Iran will play a deciding match in Qatar. The U.S. must win to get to the second round. Roxana Saberi has more. As the U.S. warms up to face what could be its final foe on the field at this World Cup, this is what the game is gonna be like. several Iranian state media journalists took aim last night at the team's coach and captain Tyler Adams. You say you support the Iranian people, but you're pronouncing our country's name wrong. Our country is named Iran not Iran. Please, once and for all, let's get this clear. With questions about immigration, inflation, and racism. Are you okay to be representing the U.S.? Meanwhile, there's so much discrimination happening against black people in America. My apologies on uh, the mispronunciation of your country. Um, yeah, that being said, you know, there's discrimination uh, everywhere you go. In the U.S., we're, we're continuing to make progress uh, every single day. And Adam says his team is focused on the match. These players need to score some goals against Iran and stay strong in defense. Otherwise, Iran could kick them out of this World Cup. The two sides met once before at a World Cup in 1998. Iran's team handed the U.S. team white roses, a sign of friendship despite political friction. Iran defeated the U.S. 2-1. to one. But this year's tournament takes place as anti-regime protests rock Iran. Do you have a message for the Iranian people? We, we empathize 100% and we do support women's rights. Journalist Grant Wall says Iran's players feel additional pressure. The Iranian team is not playing as well as they did in World Cup qualifying. And I think part of that is they're under a lot of stress. This Iranian player said, We'll do our best to make our people happy. We saw Iranian players refuse to sing the anthem of the Islamic Republic before their first game here, a sign they don't support the Iranian regime. But when it comes down to it, they're here to win. If they do tonight, the U.S. will be going home. Roxana Saberi, CBS News, Doha. And kickoff is at 1 o'clock this afternoon. There's more to come on News Street Now at noon, how lawmakers are working to avert a national railroad strike that could put the economy at risk. Details next in the Money Watch Report. You're watching News 3 Now at noon. Due to someone else's carelessness, Martha was seriously injured. She knew to call Hupi and Abraham. They got me way more than I thought I would ever get. Tell them you mean business. If you want to win, call Hupi and Abraham. This holiday season at the Century House. Give $50 or more to charity and get $200 off any stressless recliner with power. Any stressless recliner and ottoman or any stressless office chair. Or 
get $200 off each stressless sofa seat or $400 off all stressless Mayfair recliners and ottomans in all Paloma leather colors. Shop the Century House, 3420 University Avenue in Madison. Habitat families build their own homes alongside volunteers, pay an affordable mortgage, and are grateful for your help. With safe and permanent housing, Dane County families can invest more in their health, education, community, and beyond. Please donate or volunteer today. When I had stubborn fat, I always felt self-conscious. I couldn't wear the clothes I wanted to wear, and it was so frustrating. I worked so hard by working out, by dieting. That stubborn fat was just not going anywhere. I had this vision of how I wanted to look. I didn't feel like myself, so I did what I needed to do. I called Sonobello. Sonobello is America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist because it works. Sonobello's board-certified surgeons use micro-laser technology to safely target and remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently. Sonobello removed this big pooch right here. I have curves. I have exactly the body I've always wanted. I got myself back, my shape back, but most of all, my confidence back. I lost four inches off my waist. Going to Sonobello has completely changed my life. Just look at me. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly. Call 1-888-510-6198 or go to Sonobello.com. Wisconsin is a home of workers. We know what needs to get done, and we do it. Yet, we've been hit hard, some harder than others. Our contact may be limited, but we still can lift each other up. The Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy providers are working together to help keep your heat and power on. You may not ask for it, but we want you to know we're here. Distracted drivers cause serious injuries. The driver behind me was on her cell phone, rear-ended me. I absolutely would recommend Hupi and Abraham. They know how to get you all the money that you deserve. Tell them, you mean business. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says this week Congress will consider legislation to avert a potential railroad strike after four rail unions rejected the new contract brokered by the White House last September. It comes after President Biden called on Congress to take action and adopt that tentative agreement into law. Without action, rail workers could strike as soon as next week, costing the U.S. economy as much as $2 billion per day, according to economist predictions. A fourth major cryptocurrency company has now filed for bankruptcy this year. New Jersey-based lender BlockFi is seeking to restructure under Chapter 11 protection, citing exposure to the collapse of cryptocurrency exchange FTX. The firm had already paused client withdrawals earlier this month, and it claims it has more than 100,000 creditors with liabilities totaling from $1 to $10 billion. And today is the 10th year of Giving Tuesday, a global movement that has inspired millions of people to donate to charities and celebrate generosity. Last year, a record $2.7 billion was donated in the U.S. alone. Creators of the movement insist it's not just about money, but also taking small actions that'll brighten someone else's day. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Dan Lieberman. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrial is down 51 points. The Nasdaq off 41. The S&P 500 down 14 and a half. Thousands of infant sippy cups and bottles are being recalled over lead poisoning risks. The company Green Sprouts has pulled more than 10,000 cups and bottles. Products include a stainless steel sippy cup and one with a straw and stainless steel bottle. There's a risk the base of the bottle can break off, exposing a, so a solder dot containing lead. The products were sold at By Baby, at But. But by Baby, Bed Bath & Beyond, and Whole Foods, and Amazon. If you have the products, contact Green Sprouts for a refund. We'll share today's egg prices and the latest forecast next at noon. And then later on Live at 4, it's Giving Tuesday, a day to give back to our communities. Jen Davey from Madison Association of Fundraising Professionals shares how you can help. That's today at 4. All you have to do is point. Yes! 1-800-GOT-JUNK can make it disappear. And that's why they all start dancing. Woo! 
Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Or visit 1-800-GOT-JUNK.com. Hello, I'm Roman Ryan of Ryan Funeral Homes. As a locally owned and operated funeral home, it's important to know that not all funeral homes are the same. Some other Madison area funeral homes are actually owned by corporations based outside of the United States. A corporately owned funeral home is focused on the bottom line, making services more costly. We have served local families for more than 80 years, and our priority is investing in the community and your family. In your time of need, Ryan Funeral Homes are here for you. Remember this? Forecasts are predicting an unreasonably cold and snowy winter. Now's the time to winterproof your home with USA Insulation. 35% more efficient than traditional insulation. Our foam in your walls keeps the cold air out and your warm air in. It's like putting a coat around your entire home. Call now before winter and get a $500 early bird discount. USA Insulation. Those brave men and women of our armed forces, generations of them, why should today's burdens fall back onto them? They were there for us. Now let's be there for them. Your local Wisconsin energy providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund are working together to deliver Wisconsin veterans in crisis heat, power, and help staying in their home. But they can't do it alone. Call to donate today. All you have to do is point. Yes! 1-800-GOT-JUNK can make it disappear. And that's why they all start dancing. Woo! Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Or visit 1-800-GOT-JUNK.com. They've answered the call again and again in unprecedented times. Now it's their turn to get help. It's so important to keep our service members well. Eric Franke explores the new program giving critical support to Wisconsin's National Guard. Thursday on News 3 Now at 6. Jamila Jamil joins us. I love you. I love you. Will you yeah. marry me? Yeah. Let's just do it. Plus, Josh Dallas is here. There's no Jennifer Hudson Christmas album. I mean, I'm a little upset by it. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. And Pam Yonke from the Midwest Farm Report is out of the radio barn today. She'll be back tomorrow. So here are your farm numbers. volcano on earth is erupting right now lava that's some 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit is flowing on Hawaii's Big Island Amy Kylie shows us how the state is responding this whole thing right here that we're flying over right now this is Mauna Loa the world's largest active volcano is erupting in Hawaii for the first time in almost 40 years. It's happening on what's called the Big Island, which shares its real name with the state. The Census Bureau says just over 200,000 people live here. Scientists say the lava is flowing into the northeast rift zone. They say it should slow down in that flat terrain and likely stop before reaching the large town below. We just are getting uh, a little nervous from time to time, but it's at least a week away, and we're hopeful that it won't make it all the way to the town. But many Hawaiians know the dangers of the volcanoes that shape their land. This video is from when nearby Kilauea erupted in 2018. It began a less dangerous recurrence last year, so this is a rare dual eruption on the island. To keep people safe, Hawaii's emergency management agency says it has activated its operations center. A state official says the National Guard is on standby and the state health department is monitoring air quality. I know a lot of this freaks people on the mainland out, but look, these are very rare instances. We follow them carefully with our geology folks, 
and we're okay. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Well, for now, the only threat with this eruption is volcanic smog and ash, leaving residents with a front row seat to nature's beauty. Let's head over to the Weather Center now. Not beautiful Mother Nature today around here. Not at all. This is a very Monday-like Tuesday for us as we're getting into the weather. As we are still looking at visibility really obscured throughout southern Wisconsin. So let's get into it. About five miles for Madison, seven for Monroe and Janesville at 10. We're seeing improvements around Dane County and areas to the southeast. But the visibility itself has also just gotten more obscured to the northwest for our friends from Lone Rock, even to Verona as of right now. So let's go ahead and get into what we're watching for. We've been tracking the system over the last couple of days, which has been bringing in snow from the Great Plains now up into the upper Midwest here, which has been bringing in even heavier bands of snow just outside of Minneapolis as of right now and starting to leak itself into northwestern parts of Wisconsin. Now we are looking at some developments of rain just outside of Green Bay. We're staying rather dry for now, but that's looking to change as we continue to see that system develop and move its way east. Now, once we do see that, we are looking for a very strong cold front, which is also going to be triggering some potential severe weather that's looking to be rather uh, something to be concerning about for our friends into the Mississippi Valley. They're at a level moderate four risk for us, which is four out of five for seeing severe weather as we get into later parts of our Tuesday afternoon and for our Tuesday evening. But for us, this is what we're going to be dealing with. This afternoon, wind speeds are going to intensify coming in from the south. Going to be funneling in more milder temperatures for us, and then right behind the cold front is where we're going to be watching that snow continue to develop across Wisconsin in itself and starting to bring its way into the rest of southern Wisconsin. Now we're looking for rain first, but then as we get into the evening hours, we're going to start to see that transition into some snow closing into the rest of our Tuesday nights. Now as we get closer to about the midnight hour, we're looking for that system to move its way out of the upper Midwest. So we're not going to be looking at too much overnight precipitation, but the rain in itself is going to be very minimal at best. We're looking at maybe a tenth to a quarter of an inch around Dane County and areas to the north are looking around the same, but many areas are going to be looking at trace amounts of not only rain, but of snow as well. Areas like Decorah, La Crosse, and Viroqua could see about an inch or two of snowfall, but overall we're not looking at much in terms of really any accumulations to the east or even around Dane County once this event is over with. But for those areas, remember, we are looking at temperatures to drop overnight and plummet into the 20s. So any areas that are going to see some rain or even some ice or excuse me some snow is going to develop that ice overnight it could be making travel rather hectic for our Wednesday morning so make sure you're giving yourself a little extra time in the morning and prepared for any kind of slippery conditions and icy conditions for our Wednesday morning outside of that here's a look at our 10 day forecast temperatures will fall to about 28 degrees for our Wednesday then we'll start to see slow improvements going in from Thursday to Friday as we're looking bound to be our next best day in terms of surface temperatures around a 46 degrees, but heading into this weekend, it'll be rather quiet, but it's still going to be on the breezier side. And on top of it, Mark, we're going to be seeing temperatures hold into the 30s, especially as we go into next week, which is rather typical this time of year. It's the first week of December, but we're going to be watching for a new system come Monday night that could bring not just rain, but potentially some snow that could leak into our Tuesday morning as well. Yeah, it's almost December. Hey, it's almost December. Okay. Got accepted at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Julian. There's more to come on News Street Now at Noon. I'm next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Today, we're sharing a recipe for ribs that are so tender and meaty, they practically fall off the bone. Any idea what kind of ribs we're starting with? News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Toyota Thon is on. Now's the time to get an exciting new Toyota. Like Camry Hybrid, RAV4, Tundra, and more. Uh, how did you. Magic. Right now, during Toyota-thon, get 3.49% APR for 48 months on a new Toyota Corolla, Camry, RAV4, Highlander, or Tacoma. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. Don't you wish you could wave a magic wand and have whiter teeth? 
Well, you can, but it's not magic. It's power swabs. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and boom, whiter teeth and a better smile. And since you're not dealing with messy trays or awkward strips, you're less vulnerable to the harsh sensitivity they sometimes create. I've used strips. They seem to really hurt my teeth. The power swabs, it just seemed very gentle. It's so simple and easy. You just open it, you apply it to your teeth, you forget it's there, and I notice that they're white and bright again like they were before. I noticed actually a difference the first time that I used power swabs. You put on the first coat and then the activator goes on and immediately you start seeing it working. It only takes five minute applications to get a brighter, whiter smile with power swabs. You just snap swab and smile. Power swabs have been clinically studied to whiten natural teeth and remove stains from caps, crowns, and veneers. It's so powerful, it removes stains from coffee, tea, red wine, and even smoking. I love my coffee in the morning. I will never stop drinking coffee. I will not be the person drinking hot coffee with a straw. As much coffee as I drink, I can use my power swabs and eliminate the staining. When I use the power swabs, I applied it directly to my front tooth where the coffee stain was. I like being able to individually get the teeth and most importantly it got kind of in between the grooves. You can put it directly on the stain that you see on your teeth and it's so precise. But as powerful as it is, it's also gentle and causes zero to minimal sensitivity. It just didn't sting, it didn't burn, it didn't have an aftertaste. It was just a swab and I just got a rub it on my teeth and that was it. Take it from me as someone who has gone the dental route but has also gone on the shelf route and I've not really seen anything work as effective and as easy as power swabs. Whiten your teeth this Thanksgiving by ordering power swabs and receive 40% off the regular price. Shipping is free, plus you receive a free quick stick pen to use on the go after meals or a cup of coffee. Visit powerswabs.com or call the number on your screen. These days, short ribs are one of the hottest and trendiest cuts of meat. But that wasn't always the case. Years back, they would simply grind them up and turn them in to ground beef. Well, they still grind them now and then, Today, we're seeing short ribs used in all sorts of different ways. Today, we're using them to make a hearty stick to your rib, pun intended, dinner that's perfect any time of year. The first thing we're gonna do is brown our short ribs in a heavy soup pot with a bit of oil. Now we add a can of condensed onion soup, some water, a little lemon juice, some ground clove, and a bit of ground black pepper. After it comes to a boil, we'll cover it and let it simmer until the ribs are fork tender. While we wait for that to happen, you might want to make a salad or throw in a pot of water for some noodles to serve with them. Once they're tender, it's time to stir in our secret ingredient, a crumbled slice of pumpernickel bread. The pumpernickel adds in rich old world flavor and helps hearty up our ribs. Serve these over some buttered noodles and spoon on the pan drippings for a restaurant fancy dinner that you can enjoy in the comfort of your own home. To get the recipe for our fall off the bone short ribs, all you need to do is visit our website. I'm Howard of the Mr. Food Task Kitchen, where today we found a fork tender way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. And here's Julia in one final check of the forecast. Well, we're expecting four temperatures to still climb to near 50 degrees for many of us by the time we get into our afternoon. Outside of that, we're looking at rain showers, potentially bringing in a couple of flurries or some snow showers by the time we get into the later part of this evening. But later tonight, that looks to clear up. But with the rain and snow that we could see, with these temperatures falling, we got to be watching out for ice going into tomorrow's commute. And that, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.